What's up everyone back for another beer review and today is not only Wednesday which of course means it's time for another Western New York Wednesday here on the channel but it's Christmas so Merry Christmas to everybody out there hopefully you're spending some quality time with your family and friends and to celebrate Christmas I thought I would review a beer from the Southern Tier Brewing Company and they're out of Lakewood New York and this is their 2xmas the 2019 vintage so this is a winter warmer but on the label they are calling this a spiced double ale that is brewed with orange peels ginger root cardamom cinnamon fig paste and cloves comes in at eight percent alcohol by volume 40 ibus and at the time of review this bottle is just under two months old so full disclosure i've had this one before i haven't had this vintage but i've had a couple in the past and this one kind of reminds me of a uh, liquid fruitcake. So I think it's appropriate that they call this 2Xmas and it is a uh, you know festive Christmas beer because from what I remember, it definitely is uh, reminiscent of a fruitcake in beer form. And uh, yeah, I wanted to review it for Christmas. It is Wednesday, Western New York Wednesday. We have a beer from the Western New York area. It's Christmas time. Let's crack this one open and see how it is. Now, I do remember enjoying this one. Uh, I like fruitcake. I know that's probably not a popular opinion out there feel like you either love or hate fruitcake. It's, there's no like in between, um, but I enjoy it. I don't, <laughs> let me take that back. I don't love fruitcake, but I like it. Uh, so I'm favorable towards it. Now there are a lot of people that absolutely despise it and I can see that. Anyway, hashtag proper glassware, give it a pour here and uh, see how this one is. All right, that should be good. Now that pours out this really nice, almost like mahogany, or it's like a mahogany with some orange mixed in. Um, you know, it's uh, somewhat filtered, a uh, little bit of like fine particulates in there. Has about a finger and a half to two finger uh, straight up khaki colored head. Super creamy looking, maybe a little soap sunsy bubbles going on, but very creamy looking. A lot of carbonation. It's probably not gonna come off on camera. This is probably be darker on camera than it is in person, but hold it up to the light. Definitely mahogany, orange, fine particulates. But yeah, there's a lot of carbonation in there. Looks nice. Let's give a get a get a nose on it. Yeah, so this has been out of the fridge for about an hour, and I wanted it to warm up to have those, you know, spices pop and whatnot. Yeah, lots of, lots of just festive spices. I mean, there is pretty big, like, there's a cardamom blast here. There's dark fruits. They use fig paste. I would say, you know, figs, plums, dates, things like that. Definitely cinnamon. Did I, do they brew with cinnamon? Yeah, cinnamon. The orange peel, I'm not getting as much. Uh, ginger, for sure. Uh, cinnamon's definitely there, though. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cardamom, and, like, those dark fruits. That's where it kind of is reminiscent of a fruitcake. This has a big, like, bready component to it. It's like a dark brown bread or approaching that. It doesn't really have, like, a big toasty or roasted kind of uh, malt base to it. It's more just, like, straight bread. But then you get those, you know, the fruity components. I mean, yeah, I just went there uh, for for another nose, and I got like orange peel too, which is nice. But yeah, this this smells like a liquefied uh, fruit cake. There's not much more to say about it. I mean, I enjoy the smell. It has a lot of spices to it. it has the fruity component, big bready notes. I I'm enjoying it. So let's get into it. Cheers, everybody, and Merry Christmas. Hmm. On the taste, I'm getting a little bit more, actually getting an alcohol blast, um, probably because I let it warm up to almost room temperature. It's probably 55, 60 degrees. I mean, it's down here, it's like 65-ish, so probably not quite room temperature, but close. Um, getting a little bit of like alcohol on the palate, which isn't a bad thing. It's actually nice, kind of, my uh, my grandma used to make fruit cake with brandy on it. She would do like a, like a, a brandy drizzle or whatever, so, something similar to that. Um, and it always had like a very slight alcohol kick. I mean, it wasn't like there was even probably a percentage or two of alcohol. It was very low, but it was delicious with that brandy. And um, kind of reminded me of that. It's almost like a an alcoholic fruit cake, which is nice. Yeah, so very ready. There's more fruit and there's more of that orange peel in the taste. So I get a nice breadiness up front, like a white bread approaching like a brown bread. And then I'm hit with the alcohol like right after that. I'm hit with like this orange peel zest. Um, well, I mean, you know, like the zest of an orange, orange peel. Uh, it's not like a juicy orange, it's more of like a zesty uh, orange peel. The the uh, fig paste, the, the figs, the dates, the dark fruits kind of come out. And then 
middle of the palate, that's where like the cinnamon, cardamom, and a little bit of that ginger root kind of hits me mid palate. And right from mid palate to the back of the palate, this dries out quite a bit. You, you would think it'd be super sweet up front, and it is, but you would think that a lot of that sweetness would carry on to the end, and for me it doesn't. That the, those spices and the alcohol kind of dry it out. This isn't bitter per se, it just has a very big dryness. I would say this is almost full on dry for me. We'll go semi-dry, because there is still a little bit residual sweetness, but it's a little bit drier than I remember it. Uh, body on this one at 8%, Medium to higher side of medium body, so it's appropriate. The mouthfeel, I wish this had a little bit more of a, uh, I don't know if I would necessarily need creamy, but a softer, smoother kind of sensation. This is very carbonated. When I poured it, I could see a lot of carbonation. And as I drink it, it's, it's quite carbonated. This is like moderate to higher side of carbonation. I'd like that to be a little bit toned down for my palate personally. This is very reminiscent of when I had it the first time or the first couple times I've had it, uh, albeit a little bit more of that alcohol kick and um, a little bit more dry and less uh, residual sweetness. I still enjoy it though. I believe I originally gave this a uh, four out of five. And uh, I don't think I like it today as much as I did when I first had it. I wanna say it was like three or four years ago. Um, so I'm gonna have to knock it down a little bit. So two Xmas, the 2019 vintage from Southern Tier. I'm gonna give this a high 3.75 out of five. I'm gonna go 3.85 out of five. It approaches a low four for me. It doesn't quite get there. Uh, again, the alcohol is a little bit more prevalent. Um, than I would like. And I think the spices are a little bit more in my face and, and pungent uh, than I remember it being. I want this to have a little bit more sweetness. And again, you know, it could be my palate has changed and it has changed quite a bit from the first time I've had this and probably the last time I had this one. Uh, so maybe it was just sweeter to my palate back then and now it's not as sweet, who knows. Um, I'm sure there's somewhat, you know, some kind of batch variation from year to year. But at the end of the day, I really like this one. It's like a liquidified fruit, uh, fruit cake with a decent amount of alcohol, and maybe more spices than you would get in, in a fruit cake. Um, so if you like that type of beer or you like fruit cakes in general, I'd say give this a go. I think you would definitely, uh, at the very least, enjoy it. And I do. So again, 2 Xmas, 2019 vintage, 3.85 out of 5. Um, price and availability, I want to say this was $2.29 a bottle. So probably $11, $12 bucks for a six pack. I think that's a good price point for something that's 8%, has all those spices and adjuncts and fruits and whatnot in it. So uh, I think that's a pretty good price. Um, I pay $2.29 a bottle. I have no issues with that. Availability, if you see Southern Tier, you should see this. This is their winter season or fall winter seasonal, and uh, it showed up in abundance everywhere here. So if you if you do see Southern Tier, you should easily uh, grab this one. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty good beer. Um, I, I enjoy it quite a bit. I saw uh, Chris over at Off the Tenth, a good friend of mine and fellow beer tuber. He really dug this one as well. So if anybody out there has had this one before, whether it was prior vintages or, or this year's vintage, I would be curious to know what you think about this one. Uh, again, I think this would be a, I don't wanna say it's a polarizing beer, but I think this is one that you probably either will love or hate. You'll either like those fruitcake, fruity, bready kind of characteristics, or you probably won't. I will say this, the one note or the one suggestion I would uh, probably give to people for this one is maybe don't drink it as warm as I have. Um, they probably recommend to drink it 45, 50 degrees or something. And I, I drink a lot of my beers, not necessarily at room temperature, but I let, get them out of the fridge for a half an hour to an hour, let them warm up a bit to see really the flavors. My suggestion for this one would be actually chill it down a little bit, drink it in the 45 degree range because I think that alcohol will be suppressed. Now you might get some suppressed flavors because the beer is colder, but I think I would like this one probably 10 degrees lower than I'm drinking it right now. It's probably like I said, 55, 60 degrees right now. I'd probably drink this 45, 50 uh, after drinking this one. I think the alcohol is a little bit too prominent for my palate and it would knock that down. And I think I would enjoy this one a bit more. So that would be my only suggestion. I know a good friend of mine and fellow beer tuber, Paul over Pia Brew News is cringing right now because he wants everything 3000 degrees when he drinks it. But you know what? Sometimes you got to drink beers a little colder, a little warmer, depending on how you're feeling. That's just how it is. Shout out to you, Paul. Merry Christmas, buddy. And Merry Christmas to everybody else out there. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another Western New York Wednesday beer review. Be on the lookout next week for another installment. I don't know what I'm reviewing, but I'm sure it'll be something uh, that's hopefully delicious from the Western New York area. And once again, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Uh, hopefully you're having a great time. Hopefully you're spending it with family. You're enjoying yourself. Maybe you got some presents that's, uh, that you enjoy. Uh, obviously, I am shooting this in advance, so I hope I have a good Christmas as well, and I think I will. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review. Oh, yeah, 8%. Um, like I said, the alcohol is prevalent. The one thing that I do want to mention is that uh, most of, you know, other half, or other half, you know where my mind is, always on other half. Uh, most of Southern Tears beers usually hide the alcohol well, so I'm kind of surprised by this one. So like I said, drink it a little bit cooler. Uh, but at the end of the day, 
I don't think it's bothering me as much as I'm letting out. And I just like to ramble sometimes, all the time. Anyway, cheers, everybody.